Hi, Roy here on Roy Reads Anything, my channel about eclectic reading and slipping in an extra video I only thought of today. It's the 24th day of the 12th month of the year and it occurred to me there's lots of people regularly watch YouTube, uh, YouTube, Booktube and for whatever reason might not be into the whole seasonal festive thing at the moment and might just want to watch something that's not at all festive, nothing to do with Christmas or the one year ending, another one beginning, any of that, no tinsel, no baubles, no seasonal books, just a regular video like you might get at any time of the year. So let me know if you think that's a good idea or not, could be a thing, maybe a few more people try to create content like that for next year. So, talking about some things I've been reading at the moment, starting with White Spines by Nicholas Royal, so subtitled Confessions of a Book Collector, and I didn't want it to end, and would like a gargantuan infinite edition says Canthy Rents and Brink on the cover. High praise, so White Spines, it's a mix of memoir and narrative non-fiction. Book about Nicholas Royal's passion for Picador's fiction and non-fiction publishing from the 70s to the end of the 90s. It explores bookshops and charity shops, the books themselves and the way a unique collection became a literary obsession. So Picador was a paperback publisher during that period. Um, I can remember them being all over the place. Sometimes bookshops would give them their own display when, you know, one or two imprints such as Penguin and Picador would get their own their own shelves. Uh, so it kind of meant something for it to be a Picador book, which I suppose was sort of literary fiction and um, non-fiction as well. Um, I was scouting around my own shelves. I've got a couple. Uh, Grill Marcus, Invisible Republic, book about Bob Dylan's basement tapes. Um, and I've also got uh, something of a chunk, a Glastonbury romance by John Cooper Poes. So, um, yeah, Picador there in, in one of their one of their larger things. Um, I remember buying this second hand, although it doesn't look very second hand, from a bookshop in Scotland that is spectacularly rude. Not the one where the guy writes about writes his own books about running the bookshop. It's a different one. And I've never been there without some kind of amazing bit of Basil Fawlty style rudeness being visited upon some punter or other. Dr Jenny refuses to go in now. Horrible place. I, I actually just think it's funny. Um, anyway. <laughs> miserable people. I don't know whether it's misery or some kind of um, performance art they're doing. <laughs> anyway, yes. Here's a picador <laughs> captured in the wild. As you can see by the pristine state of the white spine, it's not one I've delved into yet. Um, saving it up, some people rave about Poes, and um, yeah, obviously just a bit of a bit of a daunting read. Um, he did at one point in his life live in Southwick, the town next door to my hometown, Port Slade, but across the border into West Sussex, so maybe maybe that's why an unconscious aversion to uh, the wrong side of the border is stopping me from reading it. Anyway, yes, so White Spines, I'm in the process of reading it, it's very entertaining, it's those of us who spent many many years scouting for books in and out of different kind of shops and in a way our own lives are intertwined with that activity we'll probably find something to resonate in this book um, and he, he talks about things like uh, inscriptions in the books and things you find inside the books 
and and so on so it's a great read that I'm enjoying um, another thing I've read and another publishers imprint to talk about um, I've read a, a ladybird book so ladybird books were a children's form of children's book which are distinct size it's close to a5 but a bit taller and narrower they're hardbacks and they're 52 pages long and they are children's books covering a spectrum starting with sort of abcs and nursery rhymes and they went through into stuff for old older kids including probably the thing they're best known for were books about things how things work or history and and, and things like that um, I don't have an awful lot of those but this this one is obviously aimed at young kids it's a, an adaptation of the Wizard of Oz the one I was reading is perhaps a surprise from the Ladybird imprint home of things like um, th those kind of very very tame children's books a, a version of Dracula so yes Ladybird published Dracula in their Ladybird Horror Classics line. I don't know how many there were. Um, Dracula and Frankenstein, apparently. Uh, but yep, they did it. The, it's got the usual Ladybird style paintings inside, which are pretty good. I mean, I really I like this. This tomb painting is is great, and. You get uh, you know, pictures on most of the pages. The story doesn't really leave out any of the gory stuff. Uh, it's um, you know it's pretty much all there. There's Dracula's brides uh, coming up onto Jonathan Harker. Uh, Dracula creeping down the outside of the castle. I was. Not so keen on the depiction of Van Helsing, who looks rather like, uh, rather like something out of Dickens. He looks like more like Mr. Pickwick than Van Helsing, in my imagination. But um, yeah, so just one of those strange peculiarities from the world of vintage books. Ladybird did a did a Dracula in I think nineteen nineteen eighty four. Uh, finally, while thinking of books of approximately that size, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to a poetry publisher, Long Barrow Press, who produced just such beautiful books. So here's, here's a few I've got. I've been sort of collecting these. Again, they're hardbacks with, uh, with dust jackets. Um, I've ne never failed to enjoy the work. They're, they're based in Sheffield, and um, I was. Uh, I thought it was great that during lockdown, if you lived in Sheffield, that they, they, they would actually hand deliver the books to you. But um, anyway, yes, and in fact, I did, did buy quite a few of theirs during lockdown as a sort of a poetry fix to help keep me going. So the ones I happen to have are Meridian by. Nancy Gaffield, uh, which is based on a, a walk she made. Walk, she walked the 270 mile Greenwich Meridian Trail from Peacehaven to Saint Le Maire. So, uh, po poetry exploring those landscapes, which is excellent. Um, another sort of place based piece, Contraflow by Faye Musselwhite. Um, yeah, it's a, you, you know. They're lovely to have just as objects, and uh, great poets, too, great poetry as well. The tales that rivers tell have tangled with their own for millennia, before, through, and after the industrial age. Um, enjoy that, and I've not read this. Sapo by Rob Hindle. Um, I think this is the latest one. So. Yeah, really just giving a shout to Long Barrow Press for publishing beautiful books. That's all I'm going to say. Let me know if 
business as usual videos popping up during the holidays would would bring you joy um, or if you think you'd like to make stuff like that for next year either way i'll see you soon bye